Good morning. Plan for today is to have a look at a generator that I've got that runs but has stopped producing power. So we were using this uh, at Pembury. I've got a video, a few videos back of Steve Rapper racing there. Um, this is his generator. We used it with tire warmers. It probably overheated. We're not quite sure, but it just stopped producing power. So plan today is just to try and diagnose that and see what I need to do to repair it. Might be a simple fix, might need to order some parts. Might be dead, no idea, but only one way to find out. Let's get to it. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is just check that it still runs and check the power. So I've got my multimeter. We'll see if we get anything out of it. I think would be the first step. See if it runs. for a second. Okay, so that's running. Might be drowning me out slightly. Okay, so no voltage whatsoever coming out of the plug socket there. So I think the next thing to do is to take it all apart, see if I can figure out what's going on. Now there is a capacitor here. I wonder whether that's come loose. I wonder whether that's got power. That might be something worth checking before I do anything else. So I'll bring you in closer. We'll check that. We'll go from there. Okay, I think it's worth stating as I crack into this that I'm not an expert on generators. Okay, I can't actually get to the connector of that, so that's not going to help me much. So we will take the side apart. Now I know I have to take both ends off. Probably a bit of everything has to come off, so just start undoing screws and go from there. Let me grab my Parts have been. Right, so I can't can't see much in there. Um, I think we'll carry on, we'll take the sides off. So we'll get, I'll turn it around, we'll get the other end off. Ugh, got a light bit of kit. Okay, so that's everything pretty loose. So we we'll just whip that off. We've got to be a bit careful because the pull cord and that fuel all come on that side, but I can probably get access to most of what I want. Anyway, if I unplug that. I think I can do, I think I can do this capacitor, which I don't want to get a shot from, because it'd still be live and it hurts like a lot. I 
chance it's bent the compressor out. I can't take it off then, what won't you undo? It's annoying, why won't you undo? There we go, so that's the capacitor off, fuel is undone. Still attached somewhere. Real the car. So what I'll do, I think is start with the capacitor. Okay, so one thing to note is my my meter hasn't got a capacitor. Okay, that's it. Can't measure capacity of a capacitor. <laughs> um, but I can do resistance. So, what should happen with the resistance, I think, is it should slowly climb with the capacitor. seems to do. As far as I can tell, that's okay. So that's step one. Now let's look and see what else I can do. No, I think I can just whip that off. I don't really want to take the So if I take, to take this plate off, I need to take these two 10mm nuts off, which hold the carburetor in place. I might just whip them off quick. Here, grab some tools. Okay, so we'll whip this off. The bits for the pile. Okay, so one thing to test is this switch here. This is the overheat switch. So what I need to be sure of is that that's allowing voltage through it. Because if it's not, that's the problem. Now I can just check a simple continuity check. It should be. I believe we should have continuity there. And we don't. So if I push it all the way in. Okay, so I think that actually, that might be a problem. Because, if we look, can you see, let me see. These two wires here, oh, I've just flicked fuel everywhere, that can't be healthy. These two wires here, one of those, come on, where's it? Let's trace them back, let's pull the fuel tank. Yep, there we go. So that's going to make life a lot easier. Let's bring you in a little closer and I'll explain to you what I mean. So <clears throat> that switch goes to these two wires, right? And one of those let's through here. One of those ends up as the positive. This one here is the positive for this. So, there must be continuity for me to get energy through there, right? So, if we go back to our switch, bring it back a little bit, I would say there should be continuity of this switch for me to have power, and there is not. So, 
do some disassembly. See if we can figure out what's going on here. Now, obviously, we could just replace this. I assume it's a uh, 3.5 amp switch. I think it's dead, quite frankly. Now I could probably put an inline fuse in. Okay, so what I'm going to do, see this is really together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the shed, draw these rivets out, and we'll see what's happening inside. I think this is dead, so this is really more just to find out what's going on at this point. Okay, so hopefully I've drilled these out well enough. Oh, bits and tools and stuff everywhere. So the way that works, when that's pushed down enough, that should join that. So I don't know why. We won't get in contact there, to be perfectly honest. So I bet we are now. There we go. So what, what I think has happened is this has bent a little too far out of the way. We should probably get away with that. Oh yeah, it's pretty. pretty pretty tired I'd say so I'm pretty convinced that is the problem now I could force this back together but I might see if I get hold of another one three and a half amps apparently not a lot Probably get away with a little bit more, but we'll uh, we'll do it for now. Okay, so I've done a bit of research, and I can buy another one of those online, but not locally, which is pretty typical. So plan now, I think, is just to reassemble everything. I'm going to start by putting this back on the carb. A few moments later. Okay, so I don't know if you can see. Can you see? Turn I've not put either end on yet. There's the fuse holder, and that just goes into the two ports where this fits. And then that was the f that was the circuit breaker there. So I should be able to start this up and check to see if it's got power. So that's what I'm going to do now. If it'll start. Got fuel. I need a bit of choke. <laughs> Just get terrified the cat. So in theory, should have 240 volts here or something. Well, 100. We got voltage anyway. Am I? Like that. There's definite voltage there. So I'm happy. I'm going to remove that so that nobody thinks it's ready to go. To be a little bit careful because there's cause still be a bit of a jolt from the capacitor, I suppose. I can't get it off. There you go. Right, so what I can do now is put it back together. I'll leave that end panel off, probably. Um, 
Oh no, I'll put it on, otherwise I'll lose all the screws. So I can put it back together, ready for when that bit arrives. But I think we solved the problem, so I'm happy. Okay, there we go. So, if you've got a Swiftcraft generator and it stops producing power, I'd start by checking the continuity of the circuit breaker. Luckily, one of the easiest things to replace, four screws, panel off, swap it over. So I took a bit more apart than I needed to, but happy days. We've got it sorted, the bit's in the post, and I can uh, take this with me to Donington next weekend, give it back to Steve, and he can use it to keep his uh, race bike tyres warm. Brilliant. See you in the next one.